Then to turn, it's on now, actually. There was just some pressure in the tube. So that's done now. There's some tools in there for it too. I usually keep camp firewood here, and this is the hot water tank for the shower and the um, sink. Just turn this, make sure that it's not running while you touch this, because this, this whole thing gets hot. Sight glass here, so you can see if the flame is lit, is right here. Each season, I take an air compressor. I take a, a soft bristle brush, and I brush this all right here, and then I take an air compressor and just blow this out. When it's time to winterize, there's a little plastic uh, plug here you just unscrew that and it drains out all the water from it um, and then this is the overpressure relief here you can let some out this is propane tank most uh, gas stations will be able to fill that up or an RV shop this should just be storage um, an extra room for outside and this hook here this hook here how you get the awning down. There's a sticker here. It says push this up to roll down, pull it down, push it up to roll up, pull it down to roll down. So I'm gonna pull it down. I'm gonna grab this. Make sure you do not lose this. It's a spring loaded. So if you lose this, it'll slam this in, whip that up, and it'll be stuck in there. Grab this. You want to put it up, hold on to this because it's spring loaded. Pull this so that it's in the direction to go back up. And make sure you don't lose this because it's taller than you, so you gotta grab it at the end. Something to remember is watch how this string, the strap, is rolling up. Sometimes it gets rolled in underneath the awning and then it's a pain to get out. So you want to make sure it stays on the uh, gray metal part here, not off of it and not under the awning. If you want to take the awning and actually make it into an extra room, you can take this off with this, actually put the legs out here, they extend down, and the awning will come all the way out. Then you can actually take um, tent spikes, and you can tent spike these into the ground. And then you can buy a um, Velcro bug net that literally is meant for these so it'll fit all the way around so it's like a, it's on an outdoor patio i'll put this back it should just be storage oh yeah so it's a tire iron the other half is on the other side these are if you park at a campsite it's um dirt sand or it's gonna rain and it's gonna be mud you take these and you put it underneath stabilizer jacks. So the stabilizer jack sits on here, it widens the platform of the stabilizer jacks, and then make sure these are on the uh, outside so you can pull them. Sometimes if you park at a camp that the ground isn't perfectly level, what, what I'll do even if I don't need those is say the back is higher than the front, I'll put two of these underneath each of the fronts so I don't have to put the jacks up so high on this side. that circular key the same one for the back and you open this up there should be right here and right here two air chucks so you can fill the suspension airbags up to 70 psi and you can google it they'll tell you how much it should be for what you're doing uh, same thing here those uh two by sixes for the stabilizer jacks storage this is the sewer system this is potable water hose. It's this color for a reason. If you ever buy one for potable water, it'll be the same color. This is a filter for potable water. I always put potable water in the system, even if you don't plan on drinking it. Um, I just feel like it's safer to do it that way. This is tank deodorizer sanitizer. Um, before my trip, I'll put one of these into a tank and put like 
a gallon of water in the tank just so that I have something flushing around in there before we start using it. Uh, this is an oxidation remover. You gotta be very careful with this. This right here, if you look, do you see how the clear coat is coming off? If you use too much of that, you'll actually take more of the clear coat off. But what this is supposed to do is deoxidize all these spots like this and even them out. Um, I actually used it on the front of the RV and it took a long time, this part here. Uh, it took a long time to use the instructions are in there. Actually, this is where another person tried to use something else to detail this front and you can see how the clear coat came off. So you gotta be careful how much you actually sand down. This is a replacement for the filter here. It just twists on and off each season. I would change this out, whether you used it a lot or not. Um, I would also keep a pair of gloves in here. This is black water tubing. There's gray water, which is shower, sink, stuff like that. This is black water from the toilet. Um, what you would do is get a hose from your house, plug it into, actually a spigot from your house, plug it in, or from any potable water source, plug it into that, plug that into here, plug this in to here, and this is actually a regulator so that you don't over pressurize the system. If you ever see a leak coming from the toilet um, flusher, that's because it was over pressurized. It's very common, $20 repair, you can do it yourself with a Phillips head screwdriver, but that means that this went bad um, and you went too high of a pressure. So this is, I actually replaced this last season and here's the old one, it went bad. Um, normally this sits in here, but this hose is like an inch too long and it annoys me, so I don't put it in there. Um, and if you're at camp and you want the hose to come in, you don't want all the hoses sticking out, you can actually put it under here and it will fit right in there like that. So this actually should be on here. This is a, a, co a temporary cover, just quarter turn, goes in underneath the hole, quarter turns on, you feel a click, and you can actually drain it right here if you need to. What you do is, this is the black water body waste, and this is the gray water. Once this is connected to here, the other end goes into a hole in the ground at either a campsite, um, off 84, there's a truck driver's gas station with Burger King. You actually can pay in the gas station and dump there. Um, and you'd want to pull the black water first and then pull the gray water, rinse out this part of the black water. And then when you're done, spray, uh, disconnect this and spray through this with a uh, hose that they usually have at any of the dump sites. This thing is used just to um, give the black water, actually the plumbing, this here, um, a way to always be going downwards. Sometimes you go to a campsite and it'll be like a little off and you can't tell with the naked eye. It's a little off so you'll end up with some body waste sitting in it. Use this instead, it'll actually go like 20 feet um, when I'm at a campsite and it'll always go downwards towards the drain. This is the refrigerator access. Um, same thing with the hot water tank. I would open these at the beginning or the end of the season, however you like, and um, brush it off with a soft bristle brush and spray it with an air compressor. This is storage compartment. It goes all the way back across to the other side where the hot water tank is. This is quick access to the um, electric panel you want to turn the breakers on or off and this is this is the hookup to the generator if you have the generator on and you plug into here you can only use one of the air conditioners front or rear you can't use both because they're both uh, 30 amp I believe and 20 amp they're both 20 amp and the generators 30 amp so you can't use both you use one or the other and then um, these are all the other ones for inside. It also has a cable. If um, the place you have, the campsite you have has cable access, it'll be in the same stand as the electric and the water um, and the wires in here for that. There's a bunch of adapters in here, depending on what campsite you go to, you can always plug in. Just make sure that 
if you're gonna plug into something that's less than a generator, to keep an eye on these two. If you go to a 20 amp outlet, you'll know because the dongle will change or you're gonna go to a household like this, you can't be using the air conditioners on those. Um, if you're at a campsite, usually the first thing I do, level the truck, plug into electric, which you just unplug this from here and plug it into the campsite electric. Um, and then check for TV. If you don't have TV, there is a satellite on the roof. I've actually never used the satellite to get TV, so I'm not 100% sure how to use that, but all the controls are up there and the instruction booklet's up there. This is the gas tank. There is a lock. Right now I have it unlocked just because I just filled up uh, 80 miles ago. So it takes regular gas, it says right here, and then you can lock it so nobody can steal your gas at the campsite, which I guess happens a lot. Um, two more awnings to work with the same as the other, and then we'll go inside. Um, the tow hitch can pull a vehicle. Um, I haven't personally done it, but I've let somebody else use it who has pulled a, they pulled the S2000 and had no problems at all. Um, and the wiring connection actually works. You wanna keep the door open. There is a thing behind the door to lock it open. If you want this to stay open, uh, so that you're not constantly waiting for it to open and close every time you come in or out. There's a button right here you can press and it'll stay on. Um, these are more lights, one for in outside here and one for inside. If you want to store your shoes, you turn this, store shoes here. Um, that keeps spare parts like this. Um, number one failure for the tires is the valve stems or extensions. So I keep these in here. Usually places that tire shops won't provide you with the parts, but they'll do the labor. So I keep those here. Uh, at the end of the season or when you want to park this um, more than a couple weeks, you can actually turn off the RV, turn everything off, and there's a switch here. If you turn this down, it says store. That cuts off all power to the three batteries that are in the front. There's a cooler here. All the doors, all the compartments click closed. So if you want to open these, you actually have to pull them up and then out. And that prevents the doors from sliding open and closed when you're driving. Um, you can power the generator from three places. The generator itself has a button, start stop button here, and a start stop button up on the left side of the drivers. You can test the levels here to see how much water, how much LP gas you have, and what the battery condition is. Then there's a water heater button on off. If you turn this on, the pump, the water heater will, the light will turn on. And then you have to wait like 10 seconds for it to go through its process. If the light turns off, it means that it didn't stay ignited. So that happened last season. I brought it to get service and they said, yeah, you have to brush the this area and then blow it off. and it was fine. They actually, I think it was like $20 worth of service because it took them 10 minutes to show me. Um, water pump. If you're plugged into water from another source that's actively on, you don't need the water pump on. If you put them both on, you'll blow the pressure and that's how you get a leak from the toilet. So you want one or the other. If you're not hooked up to water, but you have water in your storage tanks, you can put the water pump on. So the water pump is on now, but there's no water in here because I don't drive with water in it. Um, the hood light is here. If you want to start the oven, um, make sure the propane is on, turn it to light, and you turn these and it creates a little spark and it turns on that way. The microwave is a convection microwave, so it'll work um, as a oven, which we've used many times as an oven. Um, these are just storage. I love some basic stuff in here salt and pepper, soup, tuna, macaroni, and coffee. Um, the coffee maker, self-explanatory. If you don't know, um, it's just, you can just look it up on Google. It's very common for RVs. In here, I'll show you the toilet. If you wanna come around. If you have pressure, you can actually push this down to flush. So it doesn't spring up automatically. You actually have to come up and push it up to close it. So I have some water in here now. I keep water in here just so I know there's a seal. 
I push it down, it flushes, it's open still a little bit, and I push it up. When I push it up and there's water in the system, it'll actually put more water into the bowl until I let go of it. If you have pressure, you can also use this as a bidet or whatever you want to use it for. I use it to clean the toilet bowl. Um, I keep an extra knob in here and a screwdriver because the children have locked themselves in and it's really hard to unlock from the outside. Um, I have been able to do it before uh, with a flathead, but I also have had to explain to my daughter to get the screwdriver from in here, unscrew these and take the doorknob off. So just as a precaution, uh, I, now I teach my kids that this is locked, don't mess with it. They haven't touched it since. All these doors should click. Some uh, swimmy um, stuff in here. Um, the bed is Tempur-Pedic. If you lift the bed, it's not hard for six to do. There we go. There's a full spare tire here. And this is where you get access to the potable water. This is all storage here, TV in here, cable hook up there. Um, I've used this cable many times. DVD player in here, DVD player does work. We've used it many times. Controller in here. Once I'm parked, I usually just pull this all the way out like this and leave it here. But while I'm driving, I push it back. Storage space in here goes all through. There's some information about the RV on um, on the wall here. There's another one of these sheets next to the driver's seat on the left behind the curtain. If you're ever confused about how tall it is, how much it weighs, what make and model it is. Um, if you want to use the air conditioner, there's two of these Dometic uh, thermostats, one here, one over here. I keep it on off, so you can either put it to cool, auto, low, high, and then set it. If you want to use the furnace, you have to put it to furnace and then control this as well. Um, so you have to remember the furnace actually takes like 20 minutes before it actually starts getting warm. Once it's warm, it'll be, you got to be careful because I fall asleep. I wake up sweating sometimes um, because the heat will actually come out of the side here. Um, if you want to check this out here, you can actually separate this. So this will close and actually click in right here and you got your own bedroom space. Um, if you want to have privacy, but you don't want it to be just the bedroom, you want it to be the bathroom too. This has a little dongle here that clicks into here. And you can have this space as privacy instead. So. As far as the front goes, turn this off so um, let's say I want to put the jacks down I actually put the key in and turn it I don't turn it on if you turn it on you can't put the jacks down you also can't put the jacks up um, so if you ever can't figure it out just try to mess with the position of the key hit on choose if you want to retract or extend and I just hit all until they go down so I'm in the wrong position there we go. So that's it. It happens sometimes. I forget which position it has to be in, but that's it. And you want to retract. Once you hit extend and it hits the ground, what I do is I hit each one to make sure all four of them actually touch in the ground before I continue to go up. Because sometimes three of them will touch the ground and then one won't. Um, so I make sure as soon as one touches the ground, I just check each one to make sure they're touching. Um, and you just hold it. It takes about 20 seconds to actually retract all the way back up from being down, it goes up slower than it goes down. You turn this off and then you're good to go. Um, TV booster, I've never used. It has something to do with this satellite thing up here. That's how you control the satellite for TV. I don't know how to use that. There's a whole community about getting free cable or free TV that way. I, I don't mess with it. Uh, there is a wasp in here and I'm super afraid. Um, running lights here. Battery, if your battery for some reason dies, it shouldn't for a long time because they're brand new. Um, Walmart Gold batteries, I still have the warranty for them for two years, starting in March when I bought them. So I'll send you the receipts for that. I took pictures of them. Um, if they die for some reason, you leave the lights on, the backup one isn't connected to anything. And you just hold the emergency start and start it. Once it starts, it'll run off the alternator so you don't have to hold this anymore. Um, hold this down to start the generator 
once the generator is on, all the electric outlets in here will work. Um, this is powered by this button when the when it's on. Both of them work. And then this works as well. This is um, so you can plug in home stuff. Turn it on right here. Right now it's running off the battery, so I don't do that because it'll kill the battery pretty quick. Um, but when the generator's on, it'll do that. I left this in here. It's a dongle to get your cell phone to mirror to the TV. So when I'm driving, I have the kids in the car seats over there. I'll put my phone in here, put it on Netflix or whatever, and I'll put this in here and it'll connect. This is also, again, to connect to cable. If you connect down by where the electric was, it's all routed around the whole thing. This one works. That one in the back works on the same. Um, the only thing is whatever i think i think we had a problem where whatever channel this was on that will go to because they're on the same cable i can't remember but they're both connected to cable so all the speakers work um this will tell you the outside temperature here six uh it's um, currently 66 degrees so this is the inside temperature not the outside temperature right here 88 degrees which is pretty toasty in here The bed. This is a bed here. Um, you pull this up and then pull it out and it flattens out to a bed. And then you pull it up, push it in. And there are uh, seat belts, they're back there. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sets of seat belts. Um, this one, what you do is pull these cushions up. This goes down, this goes in, and it sits here. This goes flat, this goes here, these two come flat, and this is a bed. The seat belts are in there, all the seat belts are here. Um, so that bed, this bed, that bed. These spin up and down. There's an electric one in the shower, an electric one in the bathroom. The one in the bathroom is finicky with the connection. Um, it's one of the other things that I was told I should solder if I want it to work well, but right now it's working fine. Any questions? I think that's good. Yeah. All right.